set uh, agenda. While all this, what we are uh, <coughs> doing is fine inside the office, it's extremely important that our ecosystem, the outside and the buildings and all that stuff, what we also create needs to be you know, developed with the same spirit, with the same technology. I talked about 2030 is not too far away, Amit. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and people are thinking about intelligent and smart buildings and all that. And I'm sure you have, uh, you know, if you could touch upon what, what as a builder, not as DLF, but as a builder, uh, if you could touch upon what uh, you see as trends and all <coughs> that stuff, it would be helpful, I think. No, thanks, and if you uh, want me to run yeah. some pictures, I can do that while you're talking. Sure, I think you can do that. Yeah, as long as, uh, you know, buildings are hired, uh, <laughs> even if they're used for swimming pool, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, we're lucky that, uh, you know, we have uh, such large corporate tenants, you know, so every time, you know, when BRN gives a walkthrough of the office or Deepak, uh, you know, talks about his campus and all that, I think the developer's job is simple to he just to hear, listen, and comprehend, you know, what are the changes and what could be the future. Because the tough job here is that you can redo your interiors in probably seven or eight years. You know, once a building is done, that can't be redone, you know, in those seven to eight years. So therefore, the job becomes even tougher to preempt, you know, what can be those changes which can have a life for next 50 years, you know, for the building which you're designing today, right? Because, you know, some of the buildings we've seen when you talk about vacancy across India, we've seen some of the buildings which have been redundant. They are not selected. Sometimes the floor sizes, which were something there. I mean, imagine a building with a 10,000 square feet floor size today is not the best choosing option. So imagine the amount of real estate which would go waste if whatever we are preempting today for next 50 years or 40 years, uh, which will not be used. So as long as, um, you know, so I think it will become, as much as there's dynamism coming in the usage, I think uh, the future will also have to respond how the dynamism can be in the, in the development here. Uh, some of our learnings have been very clear that we believe today uh, the, the b development has to offer and cater to the complete human needs, right from social to safety, security as an ecosystem. And therefore the architectural response has to be completely holistic. You know, uh, and I think sometimes uh, one of the recent buildings which we were designing and I was very closely involved, uh, yeah, this is the one if you want to do that. It goes back to the school is a simple matchbox because over the years, you know, you've created more, you know, shapes around the buildings. And this is a recent building which I was personally involved in designing. And after all the learnings from friends and all the clients over the years, all we said is let's do a straight matchbox, right? And it's very interesting that uh, I, I, like, we are in, I walked into your office, I walked into uh, one of my client's office and there was a walking path. Uh, you know, uh, there was a walking path uh, uh, within the office and a client has, has given to the employees the bands where, <coughs> you know, uh, where you can measure how much you walk during the day. So one of the, when we were designing this building, one of the thought was if a client has to tomorrow design a walking path which is about 300 meters within the, uh, within the office floor, what should be the floor design? Right, and that's that's the concept and the thought process of inside-out design. That if we can preempt, what do you want for the next 20 years or 30 years within the floor, <coughs> right? Whether it's a, if it's a swimming pool which is in the car, so we may have to put your water lines and waterproofing accordingly. But that's the challenge, right? And then uh, you know it's very important that how do you you know d design the modular for fashion. And it's very interesting, over the years we've realized that when the buildings are divided, sometimes you just divide the floor as per a customer requirement. And you don't realize, once you've divided the floor, you've, you've created that segment for the entire life of the 40 years of the building. Because whenever one <coughs> tenancy will exit, the other one step in, it will never be the same timing. So we took an important decision in one of the <coughs> buildings which we've designed now, that we would divide the, the floor in line with the services, in line with the original design, and we would always request the occupant to, to take that division. And this has an impact, just this decision has an impact on the overall operating cost of the building. You know, that's, that's on the more inside out designing thought process. I think the second uh, key area where developer contributes is that once, uh, once the employee <coughs> moves out of the office, you know, what, how the common area is designed. And I think our learning around cyber hub uh, really elevated our thoughts how how the collaboration and engage, engagement can be driven in a, in a common area. You know, 
one of the interesting thing why CyberHub became popular and I talk about it's 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 a design and a brand success. Now imagine in North India, where else you can walk 400 meters without getting, you know, with the risk of some car, you know, smashing you, and you can just have a conversation. And what we don't realize that in CyberHub, along with the lot of FNB which we've seen, it's the conversation which you can just have it unobstructed with a good ambience around. I want to ask the same question to Amit Yu, a developer from 160, I mean 130 to um, 75, 80, whatever. Uh, how do you, how, I mean, do you think that buildings what you have developed, people develop, not you, what people develop 10 years before, 20 years before versus now, are they compliant or are they, you know, advanced to manage the trends which people are expecting, the intelligent worker as, a sh as was shown in the animation, are our buildings was ripped off the entire facade and uh, after 30 years uh, and it was redone. Well, that's, know, a years that's a hundred years old building though. That's a hundred years old building. Chicago so, Center. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it was a steel structure and I was told besides leaving the slabs, the entire building was ripped off and uh, it was redone. So yeah. when you say redone means the entire facade, all elevators, everything, lobbies, everything besides the just of slab level. So I think that was very encouraging when I read that as a case study once, that you can redo. But I think what is still most important is the first time when you're designing the floor. Because once the concrete RCC is done, that's something which you can't. Rest everything you can. Uh, but having said that, uh, I think in like every other building, when you know, uh, you know, there are, like we do a car servicing, so every 5,000 kilometer, 10,000 kilometers. Likewise, a commercial building also needs its servicing for every five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Uh, you know, uh, it's no brainer that as uh, air quality was talked about, so you know, you can do a fabulous interiors, but if your AHU filters are not changed, you could be breathing, you know, the same dirty air. Uh, you know, there are instances maybe after 12 years to 15 years, the whole AHU has to be changed. So, you know, uh, consciously something very interesting that we've taken it, that refurbishment as part of a business plan. Uh, it's very interesting that uh, as part of a business plan, 5% of the rental inflow is invested back in the project. 1.25% goes towards the machine upgradation and 3. Point, uh, Uh, no, I think, uh, no, he's, he's been gone, yeah. He's, he's not, he's not. But actually, you know, since you talked about Arun, I, I just talked about it and I requested uh, one of our client, you know, senior clients to come in. It's very interesting, so one of the example I was giving Sayed, uh, Flo Daniel and Arun. Uh, during the interior design, it was very interesting that he called me, and, and which is just an example, that he called the developer while he was giving the brief to the architect. He called me again when the first uh, architect gave the first presentation, you know, and the way the whole stakeholders uh, were involved at the design level. And, and uh, you know, so it's sometimes for our best of the learnings come from the larger clients where, uh, you, know, uh, you know, who are able to drive the best out of the stakeholders. And it was very interesting while a company like Flo Daniel was investing in about 150,000 in a 10 year old building, and I was so impressed that they were investing about almost a 4,000 rupees square feet on interiors. So I told the architect that give us reverse feedback to in line with your interiors, what changes do you want in the common areas? And then we worked on it. Thank you. Actually, I